there's no way to explain hair painting. It's just, it's just all practice. All of this is. Don't you hate that? It's like when you go to the doctor because you have like a pain in your leg and they say, stretch, stretch, stretch. And like, can't you just like tell me how to make this go away? They're like, mm, no, just stretch. So you need to stretch your creative muscles. The more you use them, the stronger they get. Doesn't seem like it. We kind of live in a world where we're used to everything super immediate, you know? When I was a kid, this is, I'm gonna date myself. I'm super, I'm, I'm like a lot older than a lot of people realize. But when I was a kid, and this is gonna sound weird for some of you that are in your 20s or 30s, but um, we had television. There were only a couple of stations and there were these cool movies, these kids movies that only came on once a year. And when they came on, everybody like, you know, their life centered around that. At least as a kid, mine did. So it would be like, they'd be announcing, you know, next week Wizard of Oz is gonna be on, or next week those, those Christmas shows are gonna be on, or next week Chitty Chitty Bang Bang is gonna be on, whatever. And you'd make popcorn and get your pajamas on, and you know, everybody'd sit in front of the TV and you'd watch it, and you'd watch eight million commercials, and it would be like a whole evening. Um, now, if I want to watch The Wizard of Oz or my kids want to watch anything, Toy Story, whatever, um, Secret Life of Pets, all they have to do is just get online and turn it on anytime they want. Pause it if they want, no commercials. And so I think like with, you know, you want to go shopping, you can get online. It'll be at your doorstep in a couple of days. Everything you want is kind of right at your fingertips, including information, you know? When I was a kid, if you did a report, oh Lord, you had to go to the library. You had to go to where the encyclopedias were, and hopefully the subject you were doing your report on, that letter wasn't taken out. So let's say you were doing a state report on Washington. You'd have to hope that the W encyclopedia wasn't being checked out for somebody else who was doing their report on Wisconsin. You know, and if they did, you'd had to wait your turn. And if you've got it and you only had a little bit of time, you couldn't take it home because it was a reference book. I mean, these are the kind of things we had to endure. So you might have to go to the library three or four times just to get a little information about the topography and the weather in Washington state. Oh my gosh, things took forever. And now things go really fast. So when it comes time, you know, to learn a craft or to learn a skill, um, we do have instant access to like, like right now, you know, you want to learn about Reborns, you clicked on Reborns, you found me. But really, um, what you've got ex instant access to is me painting this baby. What you're not going to get instant access to is you being able to do this. You're going to have to work it. And it's not going to be clicking a button. You're just going to have to sit down and, and just play and play and play until you get it. And that's just the truth. hate to say it. So anyway, I think I'm about done with this lovely fairy hair um, with this rake brush. I think I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to a skinny brush to get some thicker lines on and just add a little movement. And the cool thing about these thicker brushes, they're still thin, but they give you a thicker hair and you can just move them around you look at the hair on your head, all of them are not going the same place, unless you're wearing a very silly wig. Your hair is going in all different kinds of directions. You try to tame it to go where you want it to go, but really, the beauty of your hair is each hair is an individual strand and it does what it wants to do. And so that's what I'm doing right now, I'm creating that illusion. Again, I really don't have to do it so much just because um, I'm gonna be putting some hair on this baby. But in the places where I'm not, I, I want to have it um, look like it's having fun and moving around. I 
I thought this might be a good place to kind of speed things up a little bit. Um, this can get a little boring after a while, but I wanted to leave it in because I know a lot of people are interested in hair painting. And even though I'm not doing like a traditional blonde or baby brown hair painting, this is just kind of me freestyling it and, and having fun with this very platinum colored paint. I thought, I know that when I was watching hair painting videos, I just wanted to watch other people's techniques, see how their hand and their brush worked and and um, how thick the paint was that they were putting on and you know, just how they, how they did it. It doesn't mean that I copied it or I did exactly that because I don't think that's even possible, but it gave me an idea and, um, and that's what I'm hoping to do, which is why I left this kind of part in. And um, you can see I'm just going around the head, turning the head and just painting on thicker lines. I'm doing layers and layers of that platinum. And um, this is as thick as the paint is gonna get for me. And I think the consistency is maybe like milk, kind of, maybe a little bit thicker than that. And, um, and every layer of the hairs are not going exactly in the same direction. They're going in the same general direction but they're changing a little bit. And every once in a while, there'll be a stray hair that curls off this way or that way. And I think it kind of adds depth and volume. At least that's what I'm attempting to do. <laughs> I don't know if I'm being totally successful. I am done with doing all the baby hairs. And you can see here, I'm painting right where the baby hairs are, but I'm painting over some of them. And um, some of them will get lost and disappear. But what I want is the effect that there are fine hairs underneath the thick hairs, which is the way our hair works. Um, you know, the, the baby hairs just don't come out of nowhere and stand alone. They're kind of hidden underneath all that thick hair. And when you lift up where your hair, you pull your hair back, then the, the little baby hairs are exposed. It's super hard for me to stop doing this. Um, I always attempt to make these sparsely painted babies that are nearly bald with these very feathery little tiny hairs. And it's just not possible for me because I enjoy doing this so much. It's meditative. You just get into this little groove and you just zone out. Um, when I'm by myself, I might just turn on some music and sit there and paint ahead for a couple of hours. And it's hard for me to say, okay, that's enough. Let's stop. And I'm going to top root this baby so I don't need to do all this hair painting. It is totally not necessary. Most of this isn't even going to be seen underneath the hair on top but I just get a little weird. So it's just paint, paint, paint. And um, I wish there was more that I can say, you know, I know a lot of people want to know what the secret is to hair painting. They want like five easy steps to do this. And there really isn't any. Um, it's just the way your hand works with the brush and the way your eye sees it. And it takes a while. At first you'll think, whoa, that's the best hair painting job ever. And you'll be so proud of yourself. And then you'll do a couple of more babies and you'll look back at that baby and you'll say, oh no, what was I thinking? That's horrible. That happened to me. The first babies that I did were super stylized. And, and at the time I thought they were awesome. But now I look back and I think, oh no. Um, and you know, the more I paint, the better I get. And that's what's gonna happen when you start painting hair. You're just going to uh, paint a whole heck of a lot of heads and pretty soon it will come together. And that's what I was told and I was frustrated by that. And I'm sorry I have to pass that on, but that's just the way it is. It's just practice, practice, practice. And your hair painting style might not be what you think it's going to be. And it might not look like the person you wish it did, but I bet you it's going to look amazing. Just trust yourself. Um, you'd be surprised what your hand and body remember and do. I mean your hand and mind, not your hand and body. Well, I guess it's your body. Anyway, that's the baby. She's all done. Oh, maybe not. I can't stop. <laughs> no, she she's pretty done. We'll put her in the oven and bake her um, 275. painted eyebrow up here just for effect there we go 
think I might give her just a few bottom lashes down here with the mohair. Maybe not. That just looks yucky. Okay, here we go. Let's go pop her in the oven. I'm back. This lovely baby came out of the oven and it's nice and cool. Hair turned out sweet. I could really get away with not even putting any hair on there, but I'm going to. I'm so glad I'm powering through this. It's turning out kind of cute. So before I get to rooting, what I'm going to do is seal this baby up. Um, I don't always seal babies, but I'm trying to do it more often because people really prefer it. They feel a little bit of extra comfort. And um, I think a lot of people say that a baby that isn't properly sealed gets shiny fast from a lot of handling. And because I'm not a collector, I don't keep babies around long enough to see that happen. So um, all this is is some um, matte varnish, a little bit of tint, and a little bit of thinners. And I'm just going to pat this on the baby all over, including hair. It's just that extra layer. I know it's really, really important with babies that have air dry paint on them because it's really sealing that paint in feedback from forums and from customers is that um, a baby that isn't isn't well varnished and sealed um, can can develop a little bit of a shine from handling and this puts a, a, a texture on on the baby it textures their skin some people like it some people don't but since I use a lot of different medium on this baby, I'm going to seal it up so there won't be any surprises. Um, I'm going to actually paint behind these ears. I don't want to put any more pressure on them. They have been through enough, my goodness. Poor ears. I'm going to do this to the whole baby and I'll be right back. 